All right. So you know what? I'll do this right now. I don't. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. I don't know if you can see me. I was looking through some old videos. I'll put the gloves behind me right now. And one of the other cutters. And this is strictly going to be a vlog. I'm not going to drop in anything fancy because I am going to have to make a video on this. I call these three containers here, these tote storage containers, they're 30 gallon ones. I call this the miracle of life in the garden. You go, well, why would you call that the miracle of life in the garden? You're just going to have to bear with me because I rarely have time to come out here and work, it seems like, lately, and I don't have enough hours in the day to get things done. So I thought I'd just take you with me on a simple little vlog. I bought these three containers at the thrift store. That's no big deal. I, I don't know if the tags are still on them. Probably paid about three or four bucks for them. Set them up. And this is something I've never talked about. And this is why I'm in shock. I am in shock. I, I found the video and I went, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to do a video on this. I set these up with all kinds of stuff. Videos up there. All kinds of stuff. I just broke that, so we'll keep anything I break. This is my mushroom plant. I'm going to just regrow it somewhere else. I need to get some more mushroom pl plants growing somewhere else. Going back to this, I set this up with everything. Toilet paper rolls, scrap paper, um, just stuff, everything, just stuff. And you know, that's like, well, you say that all the time. I do say that all the time, all the time. I don't need this pole in here either. So we can take the pole out now. That's not what I'm amazed at. I'm amazed because I haven't done anything with it since the day I set it up. Well, that's no big deal. You set them up every year and redo them. No, I don't redo them. That's the thing. This one hasn't even been clean. That's why I decided to come out here and see what's really going on. Because I've got so many brown leaves, which are not leaves. This is soil. And I want to see just exactly, you know, what else I can do with this if I need to. As I was saying, I set this up. And I'm going to have to put some of this back because, well, you know what? I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to drop a lot of it back here. I haven't done anything with this. Literally, I haven't done anything with this. And that's why I call it the Miracle of Life. I did this in 2017. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I set this up in April. So that's over four years ago now. Now, yeah, that's really cool. They drain well. They're not blocked, the holes. I'm not even sure where, oh, the holes are up on this one, all the way around on this one. I haven't added anything to it. I have added nothing to it. And that's what I'm so amazed about. Just never really thought about it. See, all this really that I'm taking out, I should chop up and put right back in. Because this container has continued to make its own soil as Mother Nature does. It's just continued to do its own work. It's working, not me. So the walking onions are falling and I actually just found a baby walking onion back there. You can't see it, but it is back there. But I am gonna drop some brown leaves back in there. Got a walking onion that fell in the front there and it fell by a hole close enough to a hole where it was wet enough to grow. I'm, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted because all this has been doing everything on its own. Every year all I do is water this. I don't do anything else. And we've got so much stuff growing in here. And I never thought about it, never talked about it. No, I never talked about it because I really didn't give it a whole lot of thought. Like I said, I'm going to be dropping a lot of leaves back. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. In four years, the same plants are growing. Some have reset seed, I guess. I mean, 
This is probably a couple years old at least, this celery plant. What they do is they do what they're doing now. They go to seed and their seeds drop and many times the strongest survive. A lot of the baby seedlings can be taken out by insects too, so the strongest does survive. And then once the seeds are all done, the plant's not done, the plant comes back. So don't put, you don't have to put your celery out if you don't want to. It can grow for many, many years. It will come back from the roots after it's finished its seeding. And then you've got all kinds of insects and birds that love the pollen on that. You can collect the seeds, too, if you want. I don't need to collect them. I want celery? I can go look in any place and find celery. You know, I'm just amazed because this has been doing exactly what Mother Nature wanted it to do. It's building its own soil. Here I come destroying it, collecting it. No, but I, like I said, I'm going to make sure I put a lot back because I've done nothing. I've got layers, so we've got water all the time in here because, like I said, under other flower pots, there's always water. So even on the hottest days, and this gets a lot of heat, more in the fall than any time else. But on the hottest days, it always has water in the pot. I take this off because it's all mushed up. I, and I just wanted to clean it up and look at it. So I've got my original plant I bought, probably back in 2017. This is a mushroom plant. You can do cuttings from it. I've accidentally clipped a couple. You, you, at the joints, they'll grow. So you want to get a good joint and then just put a piece in some soil and it will, it will grow. I've got pollen all over me. But I've got celery growing in here. I've got walking onions in here. Like I said, I haven't done anything in here. So this is just old. This plant's going to be happy to be trimmed, too. It's probably going to grow better. And then what else do I have in here? So this one is pretty much it. Just a bunch of walking onions, celery, and a mushroom plant. See, I've got a pot in here that's doing nothing. See, I didn't know it was underneath everything. So what I'm going to do is get some soil now in that and probably put a lot of leaves back and put something in that. I don't know yet what I'm going to put in there. I don't want to put squash in here because it will overtake everything. We get so big. Check. And I will go back and put leaves back in because I will end up ruining this wonderful ecosystem it's developed. Even some of them, I'm just chopping them and dropping them down. Okay, so I think I've done a lot in here. Those are old walking onions. Wow. Really old back here. That's another mushroom plant. Turn that up. Let that one grow. It fell back there and grew. But it's, it has created its very own ecosystem. So all these years, what it's done is it's dropped all this matter in here. It's just amazing. I'm going to drop it back in. And till it releases off the plant. Now, we can help our plants. There's no reason in the world we can't go trim off anything it doesn't need. Because what it's doing, I don't see anything here. That's, I can, let's see. Yeah, let's just take this off. Here's a green leaf. With, got some brown on it and yellow. Well, it's trying to still take care of that leaf while it's on there. And on the hottest days, it's drawing up so much water that we can help our plants by removing what it doesn't need. But I've got to make sure I put all this back in here. I, just, I, find, see, I find Mother Nature so interesting. And when you think about it, gardening shouldn't be hard. Why should gardening be hard? Gardening should not be hard. And there's only so much that nature can do. And nature's not going to go out there and, well, this one needs a little this, and this one, it doesn't work that way. How much celery seed do I really want? Let's put a little celery seed back here. I want to be able to walk by and be able to see everything growing in here. Oh, this is so good. This is such a great onion. It's, these are walking onions. I mean, I'd say it's sweet, but it tastes good. I always know when Gary's eating onions and garlic, and garlic chives. I have no garlic chives in here. I should put a garlic chive in here. I don't think I'm going to do anything. 
Boy, is this good. Wow. But, like I was saying, this is why it's so fascinating. I mean, think of your yard. You plant your plants in your yard. Now, we're not talking toes. You're not digging up the plant every year, unless you have to. You're in a place where the plants won't last. You're not digging them up, up every year and giving them fresh soil and moving them around. In the yard, you're leaving them. Your landscape, you're leaving them. Well, you can do that in a good sized tote like this too. You can do it in any tote. As long as it's getting food, and the food would be either you're feeding it or, or the plant is making its own, which is all the nutrients it pulled up that we would be eating out of this, it's gonna break down and go back into the soil. And it's, the, it's definitely the cycle of life. And you can see this with the plants. That's what it's doing. It's taking care of itself. Got more mushroom plant back here. So I think I'm gonna come out here and just chit chat. That's why I like container gardening. There's really nothing easier than container gardening. This is just amazing. Now the next one, I should move my chair over. See, I love when I can sit down on a chair and take care of it too. Easy, lazy. I'm gonna get a lot of the brown leaves off just for fun. Look at that. I don't know what made me really start to get into this. Uh, I was growing when, when I first moved here, and I would I lived here since the '80s, and it was a challenge. I did garden. I got squash. Man, I garden when I was a little kid too. But you're dealing with insects and roads. I mean, I'm, I'm basically up on the hill. So you're always dealing with stuff. And I got stuff, don't kid yourself. I got a lot of big squash and everything. And that was, you know, perfectly fine. And then I thought, well, there's gotta be a better way, especially vegetable plants. Because normally, normally, you're not leaving them that long. So I started it. I guess about five years ago, I got my oldest one over there, and it worked. Not only did it work, look at our ground. It's hard here. You know, you water it, and it's not going to get evenly watered because we don't have the greatest soil here. That's why Gary brought in wood chips. But the thing is, it dries out so fast, you water it, and water goes where it wants to go. And then your plants dry out because they didn't get the water they needed at the right time. So I really don't know what made me start it, but I decided I go to thrift stores, started seeing totes, and I didn't see anything. I wasn't watching YouTube back then. And I thought, you know, there's got to be a different way to do this. Mimic, mimic nature but mimic it basically in a terrarium way. You know, like a house plant or something. Mimic, mimic it where you're going to control it and let it, you know, and then let it do what it wants to do. And it worked. I set it up and I started growing in there. Now remember, if you go back to the older videos back in 2017 and 18, you'll see Gary will say, I'll never grow in a tote. I'll never grow in a container. Everything's going to be in the ground. I want low maintenance. And I used to ask him, why don't you try it? No, I want low maintenance, everything in the ground where you don't have to think about it, which is fine. And he was, he's been very successful with that. But there are challenges that you just can't get through. We have gophers. He did everything to get rid of the gophers. Well, they found their way back. My neighbors all have gophers. They won't even try to guard them. I think I'm done with this one. So the gophers were a problem. The rabbits were a problem, but he managed to get rid of the rabbits. He put a fence around. He trapped all the rabbits and let them all loose. There's one that periodically knows how to get in. I don't know. He traps it periodically and lets it loose again. I like the rabbit, so he made sure he lets those loose. But he can't get he just can't get rid of the gophers. And the other thing are squirrels. Now, this isn't gonna really stop squirrels unless I tool it. And I'm not going to talk too much about tool, but you know how I love my tool. 
I have not had to tool it. They don't bother the mushroom plant. They don't bother celery. They don't, nor, well, you know who bothers the onions the, the biggest lately are the rabbits. I, I don't have too many rabbits in here. You already put a fence around. They find their way in, but they also find their way out. You haven't bothered it. But anyway, so he decided he was not gonna do totes. And then, so like I said, he had multiple issues. And he started his ponds, and he wasn't gonna do aquaponics or whatever. He just wanted something simple. And then he had to get rid of mosquitoes. He wanted to make sure he did, you know, he did a lot of research and he found out he could get the fish and boy, did the fish multiply. They really love it out here. So he did that and then all was going good. And he was growing them now in flower pots in there. And well, let's just say in the past year, he's probably got more totes than me. He does have more totes than me. We've been buying them online. I'm gonna switch over to the other side. I am just in all garden clothes and I look terrible and I wasn't planning on doing a video, so keep that in mind. I wanna keep this, because this little walking onion grew on its own. I think it's really cool. Watch me smash it with the bucket. So now he's got all these totes and we've ordered them online. You can order them in, uh, they were eight packs. I think they're six packs now, but they were cheap. They were like five bucks. So he ordered them, and like I said, he's got more totes than me. I like this. I'm going to leave this real pushy. Obviously, this whole system works. So you've got the lemon verbena that is shading and giving them somewhat of a shade, and then I've got this is dinosaur tail. These were cuttings I put in here, so they got quite big. I might pull the weeds and compost them back. Now this is fairly clean in here. There's not much in here at all. So I don't know. I've got a container there with some mint, but that they're not in these tubs. In fact, I will trim the mint out. Just this brown stuff. And being it's brown, I can compost it. But boy, if it's green at all and you don't want mint, oh, that smells good. I think it's peppermint. But uh, anyway, so what was I saying? So being that it's, it's shading, I'm not gonna do too much with that. But no, he so he started getting a whole bunch of totes. So he's got a he's got a ton of them. I mean, he's got colors he likes. He's got something called, you know, teal rain. <laughs> he loves this teal rain. It's kind of a green, kind of a greeny blue. And so he's got a lot of those. I I want I went into color first. I went into gray because it's so neutral, which is perfect. And then I went in the color. I didn't have a lot of black toes. And there's nothing wrong with growing in black. People say it gets too hot. No, it doesn't. It's plastic. It doesn't get hot, so don't worry about it. I will say, though, a lot of... Oh, this one's broke. Okay, and the pocket just goes, too. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is cut this, and it should grow roots. And I might put it in my rainbow garden down there. Okay, that's not good. I'll just put it here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll put it here, but I might forget it. But I decided to go now into color. I was painting chairs, and I thought, well, why don't I just get some coat totes in different colors? But the thing I, I'm just fascinated with this is I've got walking onions. Now, a lot of leaves did not fall into this one, so I've only got some in here, just the original ones and maybe a few small walking onions. So it didn't overly receive itself but I'm going to help it out I'm going to actually add more to it now because it's been years I've done nothing so those of you that ask me oh do you change it every year do I empty it no I don't empty them the only reason I would ever take anything out is if it's not draining if the holes got blocked up you need to have drainage otherwise you can't grow in it your plants will die a lot of times you wonder why the plants are dying you go back and you'll find out you know I don't need the seeds off of this you'll go back and you will find out that it wasn't draining. Now, if I take all the seed heads off, I don't wanna take all the seed heads off. I'm gonna let the hummingbirds and the bees come to this. But if I take the seeds off, then the leaves on the lemon verbena will be bigger. But you know, they're just as good, big or small. So it, doesn't really it doesn't matter one way or another. But this is what I wanted to talk about. If you can set up a tote, and if you set it up really, really good, where you've got the bottom, don't shovel in a ton of native soil. If you shovel in a ton of native soil, 
real fine stuff, this will block up your holes. It'll just cake up like clay. It'll just cake up. But if you put a bunch of big stuff on the bottom, that's when it will break down slowly and you have really good drainage. It works so good. You can put toilet paper rolls and you could put some shredded paper, but really near the holes, big chunks of wood. If you've got, if you can go around and collect branches and stuff, that's perfect to go on the bottom. Just absolutely perfect. I don't know how much of this I want to cut. The reason I really don't want to do too much, it's been taking care of itself. For four years, these three totes have completely taken care of themselves. I bought this at the nursery. It was a dried up little plant and they sold it to me for half price, I guess now four years ago. Didn't look like much. Sure looks nice now. And then the celery, like I said, it grew itself. I put that in there right away. I think it's in, yep, this is still in the original pot that I put it in. And this one's done really, really well. This is the mushroom plant. So this is taking care of itself for four years. I haven't had to do anything with this. Let's see, what am I going to do with you? You want to flower. I really don't want you to flower. We're going to take it out. I don't know if I can stop it. Sometimes you can't stop, stop them from flowering. You can try. A lot of times, your kale, if it wants to flower, it's just going to keep trying. The thing is, when it flowers, you get teeny, teeny little leaves because it's putting all its energy into trying to make seeds. Now, sometimes you can trim it all out, and then the leaves will start to get big again. But usually what you're doing is you're, I'll tell you the truth, with nature, you're trimming and trimming until it finally either thinks it's succeeded or it's past the time that it knows was the right time to make seeds. Either way. But I trimmed it out anyway. I will go through all of these and trim them back. This is perfect soil, though. I think I will build this up with a lot of um, kale. I mean, normally, what it has been doing all this time, I haven't done anything, is it's been dropping, I mean, even the, you know, mint, it's just been dropping its own leaves in here. This goes fairly dormant. It doesn't go completely dormant for lemon verbena, but it loses a lot of leaves. And so all that has been falling in here and it's just been creating its very own soil. This is why nature is so wonderful and gardening is so wonderful. You could do this to any of the totes you're growing. The other thing I have found are seed heads are really good to compost. I haven't talked about that. I've taken plants where I didn't want them, take all the seed heads off, put them on the bottom of a tote, load it up, and I've seen the plants in there just take off and grow because think of how much nutrients, how many nutrients are in seeds? Because every seed is like having its own little flower pot. I mean, with vitamins, nutrients, and everything it needs to grow. So every little seed is packed with all that. And the plants know it, they pull from that. I mean, the seed isn't growing, they're dumping out all these seeds that have started. This is what it's doing. These would not grow right now. These are not seeds, they're strictly flowers. You could take it at this stage and all that pollen and everything in there is just fabulous for your pots. It's just wonderful. This one's done. I'm going to leave this alone. And then this I'm not going to do much with unless I want to trim it down a little bit. Anything that's really brown. Just for, it, this would be for looks because the plant doesn't care. What you want to take off on some of your plants is leaves that are really bad that they're struggling with in the heat because it's the heat that really bothers these plants. Even like going through your kale. If you've got kale and you're in a really hot air, they don't eat this, but yet this is a leaf it's trying to take care of. So I'm gonna load that up now with leaves only because, well, I've neglected this for four years. And I'm not gonna overdo anything in here because whatever it was doing, it was doing it right. And so I don't wanna come in here and mess something up because it's been taking care of itself really good all by itself without me doing anything more than watering. I haven't even cleared any of the dead leaves off. I just left them. They fell on the ground. They fell in here. So we're pretty much done with these. There's, these two have nothing to do. 
So let's see, what other questions have I been asked about? Do you empty the totes every year? Absolutely not. Do you add soil? Sometimes I do. Do you add more leaf matter? Sometimes I do. Do I replant all the plants in there? Not always. If they come up, I've got in here everything I need. I've got my mushroom plant, I've got walking onions, I've got celery. What else do I need in here? No. I'd send, there are many times I will let the totes, I will let a lot of the totes go for four years. I could say that because I've got the video to prove it. It depends on what you're growing. I mean, there are certain things like squash is really limited. I have pushed them into the second year, but they really, really are limited. So they're going to just go on their way out and you want to plant something else. I, I've kept a couple, but you're never going to get the production. Celery. Celery is a plant that will go for years and years. It has a big root on it and it will come back up from the root if it's in a condition that it's happy. Obviously this one's happy. Mushroom plant, that's the one and only mushroom plant. I had two. I think the other one died. I'm not sure what happened to the other one. This one made it, still in the pot. And that's the same plant in there for four years. Well, it hasn't been moved or done anything with. First time I got a trimming in probably four years. Um, the walking onions, I have not added any walking onions in here, so they've added themselves. I see some really old ones in there and some younger ones in there. And of course, the baby that fell there. I haven't done anything here. In here, like I said, I planted the lemon verbena back there. There's walking onions here. And the, and the lemon verbena is in a pot, but it's left the pot and it's in the tote. So it's got a little lift to it. That's why I don't want to add too, too much in here because the conditions are perfect for that. Then I've got the dinosaur kale that I did put some cuttings in here. And let me see if it's one or two plants. I'm going to guess. No, oh, that's still the same leaf. I'm not sure. It could be one or two. It's so close to each other. It might have been two cuttings or it might have been one cutting with two shoots. And then it sprouted off on the top, so it's got multiple shoots. I put that in there probably a couple years ago. And then the next one, I'm going to have to get over to the next one because I'm not sure what's in the next one. I have grown lemon verbena from seed. Not on purpose. It just came up. Let's see. That's basically it, but I haven't had to do anything. The other one has got some, I think it's got dazzling blue kale. I'm looking over there. Walking onions, celery, and garlic chives. I got your garlic chives. I'm going to clear that off because I know the garlic chives should be cleared off. Only because I haven't touched them and they look like they're leaning over. This is so pretty. It smells so good. I'm brushing up against the lemon verbena. And it's just so good. I don't want to overdo it because everything is working. I mean, I could trim everything way, way back. But I don't want to overdo it. Let's see, what other questions have I had on totes? How long do totes last for? Leave a tote out in the sun, empty in your yard, and it probably will crack up and dry within the year. Leave a tote in your yard, as I did here, with soil in it, watering it, treating it, you know, with plants and soil. And, well, treating it as if no matter what, something's growing in it. Even if there was just soil and nothing growing in it, you still water it. It can go for years and years. It may break a little bit. It might crack. I pulled the hose up on here, and I think I cracked the handle on this one myself a little bit, but it's no big deal, just a tiny piece. Totes can last, I'm going to say, for a good five years. I have one back there, and the only reason that's bent up is because I let a purple sprouting broccoli get 15 feet tall and lean on it. It was too much. But they'll last for years, provided... The number one thing on the storage containers, the totes, provided you keep soil in them and you keep them watered and you don't let them completely dry out, especially in the hot sun. All right, I'm back. As you figured, my camera went off. I am sinking on this chair on the wood chips. Okay, let me put that there. Let me see what we have here. So what was I saying that you didn't hear? I think I started talking about when my camera went off. I should have a beat when it goes off, then I'll know. I probably would not be gardening if I didn't come up with this and see how well it worked. 
I wouldn't be gardening if I couldn't compost in place. That would be another thing. Because I'll be honest, I, I would not be able to afford the soil. I mean, I used to go buy potting soil and treat it like gold and use such a small amount. And, and it's, you're not getting any benefits out of not putting enough into your plants and trying to put some native soil in that isn't working. And it, it just turns out to be a real mess. Do I want to trim this? Probably will. But I'll trim it. Well, that doesn't need to know. I might leave that steak in there. I might use that steak for something. Uh, so I wouldn't be gardening if I didn't have totes working. I would not be gardening if I had to buy a lot of soil. I once went, I don't want to name who because I really like them. They have a great garden channel. And we started because of him. But he said some place to go to and they had the greatest soil. I've got to be careful not to be there and they're coming in for the celery flowers now. And he said, oh, you go there and it's got the greatest soil and he buys it. And he goes in there and buys 30 bags at a time. And I went there. That soil he was buying was like $35 a bag. I would have had to buy so many bags to set up what I wanted to set up. I stood there and Gary said, do you want to buy it? Should we charge it? And I looked at him and, no, I said, I can't afford to grow food and spend that much extra money. And then every year he goes back and he buys more every six months. No, that wasn't going to work for me. Not for me. So that's when I never bought that soil. It was supposed to be fantastic. I never bought it. Now, will my plants look better if I bought soil that cost a fortune? I don't know, maybe they would, but you know, I'm getting, I'm getting plenty of plants growing I, without a problem. They want to grow even if I don't want them to grow. So I've got that and I've got more than enough food than we need, so we have plenty of compost and we're remaking our own soil. I can't complain on this way. I think whatever works for you is what's important, whatever you can afford. But you know, I think if I spent a ton of money on the best soil, I think I wouldn't get anything better than what I got now because this is just, it's amazing. Mother Nature has provided before we were here. <laughs> and if it was that hard, Mother Nature would have had to hire a lot. You know, if everything's working together, this was all created have its own ecosystem and work together and I think we've we've complicated it so if you can't make your own soil then of course you buy your own soil but let me tell you something once you start to grow you're making your own soil the moment you have one plant and it's got a yellowing leaf you've made your own soil so keep that in mind so it's not like what came first, the chicken or the egg, it has nothing to do with that. What it is, is start the way, whatever way you have to start. Estimate, when you start, whatever way is gonna work for you. If you buy, have to buy all your own soil, go buy your own soil. Make part of it if you want. You've seen all my own videos, and if you haven't, go back and see it. You can make part, so you don't have to fill up the tote. I never even fill them to the top anyway. I have the rim of the totes act as a shelter, wind, weather shelter, and it works. The plants love it. And then you you decide how you want to do it. So you want to get your own soil, but the moment you start, you never throw this way. You go and fill up a bucket like this. I don't care if you don't want to put it back in here. You save that, crush it down, and then put it back in or start another container. It doesn't matter if this sat for a month, a week, or 10 years. It's still good. Because that's one thing you'll never lose is minerals. Minerals do not go away. Minerals, think of it as a rock. They'll last forever. Vitamins, yes. Minerals, no. So that's all you have to remember. And then, of course, everything that needs to grow in there, if it dried out, you would lose all the, you know, microbes and everything. They wouldn't be there anymore, but they will come back the moment you hit it with water. So that's not a total loss. Look how big this is. This is garlic chives. Again, I haven't planted anything in here, and I'm looking at it. Do I want to do anything? 
don't know if I want to do anything in here because it's taken care of itself all this time. All these years, every year I'm going to get to it, do something, I don't. I can't remember, I'll have to look back at the video, I didn't watch the whole video, what I grew the first year, probably squash. And then I started planting these things in, and then that was it. But this is, this is fantastic. Now this is skimpy, but it doesn't matter. It's kind of in here for looks. Again, it's been trying to go to seed, so it's not going to do much. It really should have a good haircut. Really cut this down, but it looks so pretty. Much might just stick this around for looks. This I can trim back. I don't need that much celery. I'm trying to figure out if the celery is shading the plant. And if it is, then I'll leave it. So that's it. I think I've talked enough. Just me vlogging in the garden, trying to get this cleaned up. Going to analyze exactly what I did for the past four years and put a video together on this because this is this is amazing, absolutely amazing. So this one's got, let's see, like I said, it's got dazzling blue kale, and that's a cutting. I realize this has got to be a cutting. And let's see what else is in here. This up. And then, like I said, the garlic chives and celery, because I've got celery growing everywhere. Bought it online, and the person said to me, once you buy this celery, you will never buy it again. No kidding. It now grows here like a weed. You know, anything that you grow in your garden, and see, you don't need a garden being, you don't need to have it to grow in the ground. They'll grow like a weed in your containers, too, and if it's food, that's what you want. You want to make your life easier. You want to be able to garden where you're not overworking. Because I'm telling you, you may love the idea of working real hard in the garden at first. And then it becomes too much. And then you change your mind. It's like, nah, do I really want to do this? You know, I don't want this. I'm going to chop it up and put it back here. Now, why do I want to cut this off and it looks so beautiful? Because this is where I walk. So I really should... But, you know, cut it up. I'm just going to drop it back in there. It will dry up and take that whole thing out. I wonder what this tastes like. Oh, it's dry. So well, it didn't, it's just for the seeds. So it's on. Um, when they have seeds and the celery is too dry to eat. Of course, you can still juice it. Absolutely. You can juice the seeds, too. Just trying to see what's in my way so I can have a clear walk when I walk in here. I even try this everything like this goes back and I will probably put more back I mean after all before I disturbed it now that's what it's been doing all these years just putting its own leaves back and then I just water the hose and it does its own thing I think this is it. technically I should take this one too hmm this one because this one's directed back in and it won't be in my way to walk and it creates some shade for everything in there that's it well i'm done so i'm going to see what i'm going to do as far as the video and talk about this because this this is to me so amazing that they're been set up here the main thing is, no matter what has been stuck in here or fell in here or grew in here since two, 2017, four years ago, over four years ago now, because we're in summer and that was spring, the main thing is I never refurbished this container. I never added in any soil. I never added in even any extra leaf matter. It all has been doing it on its own. And that's the part that's exciting. That it's been doing what nature provided it to do. Grow, drop its leaves, go back into the soil, make its own compost, bring the earthworms, bring the microbes, and the whole thing is, it's kind of like a pond with its own ecosystem. I have these three totes with their own ecosystem, so I don't want to mess this up and do too much, because right now it works. So with that, I think I've done enough. The sun is bright. It's going to be close to 90 degrees plus today. And 
well, I got a lot accomplished and I like the way it's shaped up now and I can walk by and birds can get in here and look around if they want and bees can come in here. Anyways, now I'm just rambling. So with that, have a great day and don't forget to eat each grow. Bye-bye. Wow. It would be nice if the whole garden just grew and I could just go in the house and sit down and eat candy all day in front of the TV and watch YouTube. This is this is a little broccoli plant. You see how this does? You want a little bit more? It's a little bit. Looking good. What do you think? Oh. All right, it's too hot and sunny. Let's go in. All right. It's hot and sunny.